Good evening, this is RJ Brim sitting with John Mons. Okay, thank you, sir, for sitting down with me today. Uh, can you tell me what you're running for and why you decided to run for this particular office? Okay, absolutely. I am running for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination 2020. Okay. Um, why president? I mean, that's that's kind of a, you know, you're sitting in the big chair. I mean, why president? Well, I think, you know, first of all, I'm, personally, I'm dedicating my run to my ancestors. Okay. Columbus Morning Ferguson were enslaved down in Talbot County, Georgia. And the big reason, the main reason that I'm running is to honor them and other people that have been patriots and freedom fighters. And, you know, that's my inspiration for getting this right. Okay. How long have you been a libertarian? I've been a libertarian for about 15 years, 15, 16 years. Okay. Um, as you look out, here in Mississippi, and I'm sure at a few of our conventions, you don't see many people of color in the Libertarian Party. So, as a man of color, do you think the Libertarian philosophy speaks to you in some sort of way, or how does that Libertarian philosophy impact your day to day? Well, I think the party speaks to everybody. Okay. Um, one of the reasons I believe we haven't had more uh, people of color join the party is they really don't know about us. And in my, some of my previous races, I've run for office before, is going out and being able to speak to different communities that might not have necessarily heard about the Libertarian Party. But uh, I, I think the party has a lot to offer for everyone, not just people of color. Okay. If you had to speak to your Libertarian Party as a whole in the aspect of outreach and growing the party in that sector, would you have any suggestions? Uh, we all have to just do more. I mean, it's kind of tough. I've been involved with the party in a number, number of different positions and you know, outreach and speaking to different crowds, it's not, it's not an easy thing. I mean, because we haven't had a lot of electoral success, it's hard to keep people motivated, keep them involved. But, you know, I feel that you know, I'm welcome with open arms. And I'll do whatever I can, you know, to help grow the party, expand the party. And I think the, met, the, 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 the way to do that is in our messaging. Tell people what we're about. And I think we'll draw... Uh, the crowds. Cause I think in, in this current state of things, people are very disappointed in elected officials from the major parties, and they're I think they're, they're they have a desire to find another choice. And when that happens, when they come across libertarian literature or candidates, we need to be prepared and make sure we're putting on a good face of what we believe in and when we represent the party. Okay. Well, um, if you had to boil down your core campaign or your platform to two tenets, could you pick those two and tell me why you were so passionate about them and why they are important to the American people? Absolutely. Uh, number one is ending the foreign wars, bringing all the troops home. And what I spoke to earlier about that is the fact that people's lives are on the line. Uh, people are dying in these wars. And not only on our side, but the people from around the world. It doesn't make us safe. I believe that the people have been lied to uh, to make justifications for many of the engagements over the last 100 years. So that, more than anything, I think is the most important issue. Also, with uh, military around the world, these bases and this empire, it's, it, it's bankrupted the country. And that affects everybody. So a way to get back to uh, you know, supporting what we're doing here and making life better uh, for the American people is ending the federal okay. the, the second issue that I'm passionate about is ending the federal income tax. Okay. And I'd like to speak to that for the fact that a lot of people don't know that, of course, it was sold as a lie. Only rich people are going to pay it. And that's definitely not true today. But the fact that at one time, 
the, the highest tax rate on the income tax, the highest level was 90%. And when you think about that, when you think about high, what about 100%? What would that look like? Should the government have the authority, if they wanted to, to take everything we are? I think on its face, uh, that's basically re-enslaving people. And that's something I'm not willing to put up with. I don't think anybody else should put up with it. And I think that is something that, uh, an issue that a lot of people will agree about. You know, let's end the federal income tax. It's not like, you know, for over 200 years we didn't have an income tax. Okay. So uh, we've we've been there before. People say, well, what would you replace it with? You know, how would we get the revenue? Well, we can work that out. But we don't need to replace it with anything because we've lived in a time in which we didn't have an income tax. Okay. So another reason I think that's so important is let's get that money out of the, the federal government's hands. Uh, let's push it back down on a state level. The problem with you know ending, uh, balancing the budget and all the deficits and, and being bankrupt is that nobody wants to cut any spending. But I think if the states had to make the decisions on the budgeted money, that the entire country would be a lot more conservative. You know, people in Georgia wouldn't necessarily want to pay for things that, you know, California proposes. Well, the people in New York might not like what the people in Texas are proposing and think should be a part of the budget. I think that mechanism in itself would help to reduce the spending. You know, states would be competing for not to have to pay, you know, as much and put that burden on the backs of their citizens. They would be looking for cuts. They would also be holding their, their Congress people more accountable. You know, so why would Florida? You know, we're getting ready to have a new census this year, and if you go back to say apportionment by states to fund the federal government, you know, the larger states would be like, you know, why would you know we want to put this much of a burden on our people for things that don't count you know, the people where we live. So and that's one of the reasons why I want to do a lot of talking about that on the campaign. Okay. Well, um, I didn't want to keep this very long, sir, and I do appreciate uh, sitting down with me. Uh, what separates you from the rest of the Libertarian presidential candidates out there? Why you and why now? Well, I think, one, I bring a lot of experience uh, in running for office, and I think that's important. Like I say, putting a, a good face on the party, being able to portray an image and deliver a message. I've done that before. I've had over 1.8 million votes cast you know, as a libertarian in my various campaigns. I've been on televised debates. I've been on, on radio. I'm also willing to travel and do what it takes to help the party. You know, why now? You know, why not? You know, I don't believe in waiting on somebody else to address things that are important to me. I believe in stepping up and, and putting my name in the hat and going out there and seeing if I can make a difference. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. We are out and Mr. Gina Pearl Liberty. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.